to The Late Show. Folks, my first guest tonight is a two-time Emmy Award-winning actor you know from the newsroom, Godless, and To Kill a Mockingbird. He now stars in the new Showtime series, American Rust. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Jeff Daniels. <laughs> Well, the last time we were here, we were talking about uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, which was just yeah. opening at the time. And um, it returns October 5th, 5th to Broadway. Yeah. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. were, you, were, you, were you planning on coming back? Or is this a, you know what, COVID's over, let's go back? Uh, they had come to me a few times when the pandemic hit, and, yep. and would you come back? And I'm going, I did it for a year, which mm -hmm. on Broadway is a long time. Sure. And I, 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 and then it was, you can help reopen Broadway. You can help New York City come back. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were 88,000, sure. there were 88,000 jobs that were lost just in the Broadway district. Right. So the stagehands, the ushers, the, I mean, so uh, let's help that, you know? You love the theater, let's help Of course. That. So you also, that, no, I, that and, and I want to see what it, I want to see what it means now. I want to see what it means to walk out there as Atticus Finch. Two years later. Post George Floyd's murder. And, and basically throw uh, what Aaron Sorkin had written. What Aaron Sorkin's play is about many things, one of which is white blindness. Mm -hmm. And I think the bloody Sunday for people of color was George Floyd's murder. And white people said, I had no idea that we were only taught one side of American history. I better look into that. Mm -hmm. So I started reading Isabel Wilkerson, Ta-Nehisi Coates, mm -hmm. um, Carol Anderson. Mm -hmm. Let's, you know, get educated because there's a whole... We have an opportunity in this country right now to welcome in a new America. We really do. I feel the same way. Yeah. That there is... I mean, it's strangely, not, not only in America, not in our, the way we approach our, our, our civic society, but in the arts, uh, there, there's, there's reasons and there's an opportunity where things are reopening that never closed ever before to rededicate yourself to first principles. Yeah, and white people are the ones who need to hear it. So Mockingbird is, uh, you know, with Aaron Sorkin and Harper Lee, it's a white point of view. Mm -hmm. And it certainly is the story of Atticus coming to grips with the fact that one of the big central questions of the play is uh, there's goodness in everyone. You just have to care enough to look for it. And is that true today in 2021? Mm -hmm. Is there goodness in everyone? Not so sure. But you have to choose now. You have to decide whether you're for eliminating or at least marginalizing systemic racism. Or are you against that? You have to choose. You can't just sit back and go, please cut my taxes, and I'm going to look the other way. Well, there's also a, a, a choice before that, which is to acknowledge it exists. Acknowledge it exists, yeah. Which is, so then, I mean, if you look around, you know, you know that the culture has changed. Col Ron Brownstein wrote in Rock Me on the Water. It's 1974, big culture thing. One of his points was the culture changed before the politics. Mm -hmm. The culture was coming out and taking the 60s and going in this whole other expressive direction. Mm -hmm. And Nixon and Agnew were still in the White House. Same thing now. If you look at any movie, any TV, American Rust is an example. Mockingbird's an example. We got everybody and everything in that thing. It's not just white people doing a white play and white people. Commercials, corporate America. You look at any commercial now, all-inclusive. Corporate America was tripping over themselves, trying to get to that as fast as possible. And that's great. That's great. The culture is changing, and you can't stop that. That's, that's bigger than anything, I think. Well, I, I want to ask you about American Rust. Now, this is the new series on Showtime. Um, you, you star in it. You also executive produce it. Um, why did you want to do this so much? What's the series about? 
Uh, Philip Meyer, who's a great American author, wrote a book in 2009 called American Rust. I went down to a bookstore in Manhattan and heard him read it. My agents say, come on, we're going to go hear a guy read a book. I'm going, oh, geez, really? <laughs> so, but Philip Meyer, and it was great. And I, he, my, my agent at the time, now manager, just bird dogged the book. And when I got into a position, which Newsroom helped, and some of the other things I did after that helped, to get that thing where you know you've made it, is when your agent calls and says, well, we could do this or we could do that, but what do you want to do? <laughs> That's when you know you've made it. And so I said, let's chase American Rust because American Rust, for me, I am that guy. I mean, if the acting thing hadn't worked out, and I tried, I tried hard. <laughs> to, not to work out? Yeah, oh yeah, I was going, <laughs> did I fail yet? Because I want to go home. Uh, if the acting thing had, I'd be back, to, I would have been back to my dad's lumber company, driving truck with those guys. I am one, I come from those guys. I am those, one of those guys. We, we have a clip here. Can you, can you tell me what's about I to happen? I play a small town cop who basically trying to keep the town together in the midst of a lot of businesses and steel companies that left. A lot of people at the bottom or at least can see it from where they are. And I have to go break up a fight with one of my deputies who happens to be drunk waving a gun around. Jim. Tell me what you want me to do. I want you to give me your gun and go home and sleep it off. You get your last paycheck in the mail. What the f You firing me? Give me the gun. Now that you found your new best friend, you're done with me? I protected you so many times, Pete. Tried to get you cleaned up, changed attendance records, all because you've got a family. Well, I can't help you anymore. We had budget cuts the last three years. You just made my decision a lot easier. If somebody's getting fired because budget cuts, it better be the Chinese guy. I got seniority on the Chinese guy. Chinese guy comes to work on time. Chinese guy doesn't get drunk and wave his gun around. The Chinese guy doesn't park his cruiser off 201 and sleep through his shift. And the Chinese guy is Korean, you f***ing dip. Now give me the gun and go home. We have to take a quick break, but uh, please stick around. When we come back, there'll be more Jeff Daniels, and I'm going to ask him about uh, the beginning of his career, all the great directors you worked with. Be ready for that. All right. <laughs>